has once said, Good is the enemy of great. If all that you strive for is good enough, how will you ever achieve greatness? Efforts led to this. Every rep, every drill, all the work unseen will be worth it. Because right now, the eyes are on us. I can't dab you without hand saying I don't know your dirty air pants right, right. I wake up to like a hundred texts Championship team, but we can't cut the net okay, She okay. all off in my jersey looking underdressed no I'm saying. finna buy this bitch a Honda CRX Good evening Mustang fans and welcome to another Mustang media broadcast of EDC Boys Basketball. As tonight, we'll be treated to the number five ranked West Fargo Cheyenne Mustangs hosting the number four ranked Grand Forks Central Knights. And I'm Dan Wolf. Joining alongside me tonight is Coach Jeremy Newton, West Fargo Cheyenne High School Boys uh, football coach. Welcome, Coach Newton, to the broadcast booth. Looking forward to uh, your insights on what we have going tonight. Uh, both teams coming off of a heartbreak loss or a, a close loss earlier in the week. Uh, Grand Forks Central lost to Fargo South in a close tilt up in Grand Forks. And Cheyenne ran into a hot shooting Grand Forks Red River team and dropped a game on Tuesday night, 92 to 77. And so as we start to think about tonight and, and what each team does, what do you see as some of the keys to the game for the uh, Cheyenne Mustangs? What is it they're going to be looking to do to improve upon to bring home a W tonight? You know, just looking at what I saw on Tuesday night, I think they I think they would benefit from getting their hand up on a three-point shooter a little more. There was way too many uncontested threes uh, against Red River, and hopefully if we can do that, we can be better because they rebounded the ball better. Well, we shot the ball well. Uh, we just, you know, got to clean up some stuff defensively, I think, from Tuesday. But... It's going to be a great game. Two highest scoring teams in EDC. Something's got to give tonight. Well, you would you would certainly think so. And and uh, you know both teams loaded with athletes uh, for Grand Forks Central. Of course, you've got Eric Pay going to be going to the University of North Dakota to play football. Um, and is there anything you can that you know about Grand Forks Central or anything you would be expecting? To see from them a heavy dose of pay i would imagine anything else they spread it around they got three guys in the top 15 in scoring and the other one is leo strandell is really fun to watch he's third in the edc in blocks he's a he's just they just got a, they have a really tight knit unit that have been playing together for a while and they play well together i like i like watching them well and i do recall uh you know a few years ago the uh, Grand Forks Central played in the in the championship game of the sophomore tournament for yep. the EDC. So this is a team that's certainly uh, not new to success or, or playing in big games and big situations. Uh, it's a relatively quiet night around the EDC. Not very often that you see Thursday night games. Uh, and so this is the only boys game um, on the schedule tonight. There is a girls game, another, and that's a big one too. You have the Grand Forks Red River uh, Rough Riders who are re still receiving votes in the girls uh, part of the bracket, and they're playing the number three uh, Horace Hawks. Yeah. And, and so that's going to be a, a big game as well, and we'll try and give you uh, some updates on that as the night goes along. Um, Coach, you know, you get into this part of the season, right? This is the meat grinder. It's got you got to have short memory and, and those sorts of things. Um, but you also got to keep your eye on the prize, right? You got to know, you got to come out ready to play every night. You can't look past opponents. Uh, you got to know that you might be dealing with injury bugs and, and uh, 
you know, things like that, and probably fatigue starts to play a factor. How do you keep a team focused as you're running into this crucial stretch uh, when you're playing the teams around the EDC and you're kind of jockeying for position? It is. You, you got to come to play every night. And, and now with the EDC where it is, there's a tough game almost every week, and it's or, or two, you know. So it is tough to get to get you know to get everyone on the same page every time and not you know be able to even just get through practices without having to you know slack because I'm tired. You know, you got to suck it up and go. So we'll see. We'll see who does it better. You know, and I think the team with better senior leadership generally does a better job in that. But at the same time, you know. You're really just playing for seeding right now, which is nice. You're not losing any playoff opportunities if you t if you lose a game. So it kind of takes the pressure off too, which is which is good. And one thing that you know with the three class system, uh, where before being a, a five seed a six seed meant you still had to play a play in game in that early part of the EDC tournament with only nine teams in the conference. There's really only the one play in game, yeah. and that's that eight and nine game in that first one. Um, and neither of these teams certainly at this point would look like they're going to have to worry about anything uh, related to that. They just want to make sure that they're one of the teams hosting that quarterfinal round at home before it moves to uh, neutral sites. Yeah, that's and true. So uh, as we as we look at, uh, you know, you mentioned just trying to get through a week. This is the third game in less than seven days for Cheyenne, and, and sometimes that's how schedules work out, uh, whether it's a, a storm-related reschedule or something else. Um, you know, Cheyenne, the big win at Fargo-Davies just last Friday night, but then had to go up to Red River on Tuesday and then now playing Central. Um, three games in a week, you know, it, it's kind of nice to test your mettle and, and see what your team can do, but there's also... You know, it's short turnarounds. There's not a lot of time to maybe watch film or game plan. How do you, how do you deal with that when you have such a quick turnaround? For football, you get a week yep. to look at everything. Basketball, it's a completely different animal. It's true too, and you, you do. And, and if you look at the Red River game on Tuesday, it's classic trap game. I mean, you got a big win. They looked really good last Friday against Davies. You got this game coming up on Thursday. You go to Grand. Oh, that by the way, we got to go to Grand Forks <laughs> to play Red River, and they're always good up there. <laughs> But it's just got to just got to keep plugging away, you know, and that's that's exactly the deal. Um, and and make sure you keep your eyes on the prize. Uh, any particular people you're looking to spotlight tonight for Cheyenne? Anyone you're expecting to have a big game or to play a kind of a a, a crucial uh, role in the outcome of this one? You know, it, 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 I think they've had a pretty good eight-man rotation, and they've been giving each other good minutes, and I think Deer has been really consistent. I love how John has, has blossomed in the weight room and as an athlete, and, of course, Tommy Onneman is a dog right now, so hopefully he can keep going, you know. Well, we'll be heading down for uh, uh, introductions of the starting lineups and the national anthem, so we're going to step away for just a few minutes, and we'll be back with the opening tip of the game. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. It's what keeps us doing what we love. It keeps our communities strong. So how are you doing? There's no easier way to take care of yourself than checking in with us, your primary care team at Essentia Health. In person or online, we offer scheduling and appointment options that fit your life. We'll care for you today and keep an eye on things for the future and if needed, get you back on track. So take some time to connect with us because it's always good to check in. Touchmark, we really take an input from both the community, our residents, and also our team members. And there's something for everybody. It runs the gamut. You have the freedom to participate or not as you choose. 
I personally like to play bridge. I like their book club, all the concerts that they have, the music almost every day. We like everything that's here. And you find it here. Every day is a different day. It's really about developing programming that is meaningful and beneficial for everyone. Welcome back, everybody. We're in the middle of uh, starting lineup introductions. Mustang fans, we want to thank Essentia Health for being the proud partner of our Cheyenne High School's Mustang media team and this broadcast. Essentia Health, care close to home. Well, Jeremy, you mentioned that these are some of the top scoring teams in the EDC. Would we expect that we're going to see a lot of up-tempo, a lot of looking to push pace tonight, or is that mostly a result of uh, a lot of shot choice and, and choosing three-pointers and foregoing two-pointers, a mix of both? What do you think we're going to be seeing tonight? I just, I don't think you need a shot clock anymore right now. That's that. I know it's a good thing to get into the get into North Dakota basketball, but tonight you're not going to need it. I'd be surprised if we get single-digit shot clocks very often. <laughs> and maybe that's going to be something that each coach is looking to see if they can get their defense to to kind of get into that single digits on the shot clock, see if you can have a good possession. But certainly, you know, with the number of athletes that are going to be on the floor tonight, we're going to see everybody looking to push pace and make something happen out here. Yeah, I agree. Well, the lineups for Cheyenne, uh, pretty much the same starting five that we've seen all year. That's going to be Noah Olson, Barry Penu, Caleb Deer, John Angau, and Tommy Oneman for the Knights. You have to forgive the old eyes, the uh, hard to see some of the numbers from way up here <laughs> in the uh, nosebleeds. But they're going to start with uh, Jack Simmers, um, Eric Pay, obviously. Who else do we have out there? Wilbur. Number four, Wilbur. Ross Wilbur is going to start. Strandell's 11. And Strandell. And number five. And number five, Cole Wilbur. Both so Wilbur's. the Wilbur brothers will be on the floor to start out for the game. So we're underway. Tip controlled by the Mustangs. Barry Penn, who's going to bring it up. Little man-to-man -man look from Central to start. And Gao drives, kicks out to the corner. Short on that one by Noah Olson, but it's going to go out on the Knights. I think Olsen's a big key to this game, too, because he, he gets so streaky. He makes so many great plays, and then sometimes he gets a little lackadaisical, and if he can keep himself consistent tonight, that'll be really good for us. Absolutely. Good position there for Oneman. Good look at it, unable to convert. Pay brings it down, and now Red or, uh, Central pushing it. Wilbur to Wilbur. Out here to Jack Simmers. Attempted post entry. John Angau, good active hands, getting his... Hand in the passing lane, tips it away. Cheyenne moving it up. I think they need to keep, keep picking on Pay a little bit, give him foul trouble maybe. And that's a tall ask for anybody, right, to, to try and take on Tommy Oneman. Yep. We see John Angau make a three to start Cheyenne off in the scoring. And something relatively new we're seeing from Cheyenne in the past couple games is this 1-2-1-1 one, one, one zone that they're, that press that they're throwing at people to disrupt things. and. Cheyenne good on the defensive glass there. Barry Penu tries a little change of speed, unable to get by. Angau again, oh, just halfway down and pops out. Simmers brings it up for, for that, yeah. That's I'm Strandell. sorry, that was Strandell. Yeah. Still, Central off to a cold start to get things going here. I think you gotta pick on that little Wilbur, the junior Wilbur a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Floater by Noah Olson, unable to connect. And there we got Simmers going strong. Jeez. Eric Pay, that athletic ability. <laughs> if you don't know the definition of a Division I athlete when you see one, that come over to this gym right now. This kid stands out. Well, and, and such quick feet, good footwork, and not afraid to go up against uh, Oneman as he's given up some height there for sure. And there's a pick 
by Simmers. He takes it to the rack and he scores and Central with their first lead of the night. That happens to us a little too often. We get lackadaisical on half court passes in the set and just cause these little turnovers that can add up. Kick out to Olsen by Deer. He's unable to connect. Hustle back. Good feed, oh. but trapped on the block <laughs> by Onneman. That's our guy. Great reaction. Pay doesn't usually even fake. He just goes up strong and no well, one Well, he doesn't have usually. to worry about it. Yeah, there's no one there that's really going to be willing to do that. It's a little faster pace than my B1 game we just got <laughs> rid of today, so... First foul of the night goes against Ross Wilbur for the Knights. Penu up top, out of the wing to no Olsen. He's going to look to post pass to Deer, back up top to Onneman, over to Penu and down to Angau in the wing or on the corner. Tommy Onneman. Oh, goodness. That's one country. thing, you know, that we've talked a lot about in broadcast coaches, you know, those posts, they like to put the ball on the floor, and that's where those fast, quick hands are yep. always kind of waiting to punch it out. You like to see those posts try and keep that ball a little higher and just make something happen with a drop step or a little turn, a little baby hook, something, but they seem to want to put it on the floor. And then an one opportunity. Good drive by Ann Gao. Gets through the traffic. And that's what I'm talking about with Engel. He, he got, he's, he could just tell he's been in the weight room. He committed himself to the weight room all last year. It really pays off on things like that where he's able to still get that shot up and a lot of contact there. That foul was on number 21, Kendall Chonas. Cole Wilbur, now off. Wing Strandell inside to pay. And again, Goodness. not afraid. He goes up so quickly, elevates so quickly. He does. You know, Onneman usually has time to recognize that and do something about it, but not with pay. And there he uh -oh. comes. Here's, oh! Everybody, I think, in the stands is waiting <laughs> for that flush, but uh, doesn't happen. Penu pulls the trigger from the corner, unable to convert. He's got to keep shooting those threes. They're getting if they're getting good open looks yeah. in rhythm, they're gonna make they're gonna start falling. Strandell picks up that one. Fourth team foul on the Knights. Cheyenne still without a team foul here. Pay good defense on Onneman. Doesn't give ground. Kicked out. Now Deer from the wing. Unable to convert. Onneman keeps it alive. Eventually pulled down by Wilbur. Up to Simmers, a lot of contact, yep. and a late, maybe in the arc. Maybe ref looking to see if that was the situation. And trying to give ground, but uh, contact, and they're gonna call the foul, shooting foul for Simmers, and he'll go to the line for two. I thought he was drifting a little bit there. It wasn't a bad call. I just I didn't like how late it was. It'd be nice to be more sure of himself. Yeah, yeah. It, that certainly, it was a full second, second and a half after the uh, contact. Simmers short on the first one. So lead remains two, six to four for Cheyenne. So coach, with Tommy Onneman playing offensive line for you and, and Pay being a defensive lineman, have these two locked horns on the football field as well occasionally? No, we, we haven't. We switched classes and we never get to see oh, them, Oh, that's true. He didn't have this year an opportunity. And Gao misses that one. That's gonna go off Onneman's hand. He, Stuck a hand out on that long rebound, but it tips out of bounds. Cheyenne gonna look again with the one, two, one, one pressure here. Good it's hands by Deer to Olsen. Oh, I don't feel it. You can Strandell see out to Simmers. They just gotta make sure they get back. They run that pressure and they're good, but when they get beat, which you do get beat, you gotta get yeah. back, protect the paint and cover out. Yeah, I think everyone, there's a good take. By, by Central on that one, that was uh, Jonas. You know, everyone thinks, I, I imagine when you're watching, that you think a press is going to create a turnover every time, and it doesn't. And nope. you're going to give up good looks a lot, but uh, a lot of it's transition. You just have to be willing to work hard and get back. That's right. It is. It's such a, it's such a game with that. You, it's the risk reward. Is the, if, you, if you can't get back on defense properly, then it's not worth the risk. You know, so they got to weigh that out. And apparently they're liking it because they've been doing it the last few games for sure. So the, the general or the standard uh, 
replacements here in uh, Coach Coach Brandt's rotation. We're going to have Turo Moni, Jackson Miller, and Sully Irie on the floor for the Mustangs. Try and go with their big lineup with both Moni and Onneman on the floor. Good take by Cole Wilbur there. Think of that baseline, the right-handed baseline. Has, has made it too easy for him. Yeah, kept him on his hip, able to convert, and Central now with the three-point lead. Inside again to Onneman, working against Pay. There's that he left hand. He loves to the left. He has gotten so good at that. Yep. We've commented a lot of times, just like Mike Nile used to use the right yep. hand so much, even though he was left-handed, we see Tommy Onneman using that left hand so frequently in the post. And I think that you just, as a defender, you have to give something up, so you might as well give him up, because otherwise, if you get too far left, he's going to drop step the other way and dunk it on you. Absolutely. Jonas. Jonas is hot right he now. He is. I think he's got seven of the 12 for the Knights here. And so Irie brings it up out to Jackson Miller on the wing. Up top to Turo Mone. Gotta have this. Anyway. Turo knows how to shoot the three, no doubt about that. There's a kick. Nothing wrong with that. Now we can set up. A little too easy on that trap. They've tried to trap a couple times and they've given him that sideline and that really puts a lot of pressure on a one 2 one one defense. Ross Wilbur coming in for Strandell here. So fresh 30 on the clock for Central after the kick. Jonas. Ah, oh, he found pass. him, and there wow. it is. That Tommy Onneman tried to pick him up, and, and that left pay all alone, and Jonas found him perfectly. And in Jonas that. is impressing me right now. That was, that was a really good play. Down low again to Onneman. Oh, nice. Good find to Caleb Deer, and the reverse layup is good. Tommy's in the top 10 in assists, I think, in the EDC, or somewhere on the board at least. He's a very good passer, unselfish kid. Well, and that, oh, goodness. there's another one, two in a <laughs> row by Bay. Putting on a show here. And that, that's what makes a big man even more dangerous, right? You yeah. know, it's one thing they have that size and they're able to control the boards and get easy looks at the basket. But when they know how to pass as well, then you can't trap, you can't help on them as much because they're able to find that open man whenever needed. That's exactly right. You can play your offense outside in or inside out. They like to go inside out. That's a great, great way to do it too because it's such good weapons. Onneman looks to go back door on Pay. Sully Irie throws that one out of bounds. Sometimes Sully just tries a little too hard sometimes. You gotta let it happen in the offense. It's a good idea, it just wasn't quite there. There you go, good defense. Now we're back. That, that, that worked. And Jonas there, he dragged that pivot foot. Good job by Jackson Miller and Onneman putting pressure on him. Picked up that dribble in a bad spot. No one came to help him. As we see uh, Deer and Onneman taking a break. Penu back in along with John and Gao. So a little smaller lineup here for Cheyenne, little dribble weave up top, and Gal penetrates, dumps it down to Moni. Turo gonna try the jump hook, okay, and he Turo. climbs it over the rim. <laughs> Tight game, 16-15. He doesn't usually like to do that, and then he takes it against the most dominant defender in the state, arguably. It's a good change of speed there. By Trey Wyman, and that forces Angao into a foul there. Second team foul for the Mustangs. Neither team in a tremendous amount of trouble. That go. time, Jonas yeah. dragged it out too long, yeah. looking for that drop off to pay. Unable to convert, but knocked out by the Mustangs. Surprising to me, it seems like they're running their offense through Jonas, and he's a, he's a bench player, you know? Yeah. When he comes in, he's, getting the, he's got the ball in his hand all the time. Up top to Ross Wilbur. Simmers out on the uh, in the corner to Wilbur. He pulls the trigger yeah, and fights Wilbur, nothing by Nat. Those Wilbur kids can shoot the rock. Got to get a hand up on them. 
So the lead up to four for Central. Inside to Moni. Doesn't find Angau cutting through the lane. Up top to Barry Penu. Out to Miller. He's going to drive to the baseline. Pull up. Great. Nice board. Good job. Way to attack by John Angau. Coming hard to the rim for the rebound. Pays off, and he's going to get fouled. That'll be the sixth team foul now. Or, I'm sorry, fifth team foul on the Knights. That was Wyman. That could be a problem for them. They only yeah. go seven deep, really. And with nine and a half left in the half, possibility that Cheyenne could end up going to the line quite a bit as the rest of the half plays out. Still only the two team fouls on Cheyenne as Angau makes the first. So impressive his ability to cut in and just impromptu cuts. He always seems to be in the right spot at the right time. Cheyenne gonna drop back, pick up man to man. Hard to run that press without deer up front. Yeah. That you know the long wingspan and, and the Noah. athleticism. Yep. yep. There's Strandell finding the range from three. Or no, I'm sorry, that was the other. Was that Strandell? That was Strandell. And that was yeah. Strandell. That was Strandell. Got to contest those a little bit better. That close out and get that hand in the face. <laughs> and Gao penetrates, pulls up from yeah. the elbow, and that's good. Cuts the lead to three. Jonas giving some quality minutes. He's been out there a long time. <laughs> he really has. But they, they move the ball, they move well together. It seems like somebody's always, oh, there's a hand up at least, and then he missed. Yep. That's better. Doesn't Long rebound up. controlled yep. by Jonas. That one's kind of one of those outliers, right, that yep. Long rebound can go about a 50-50. That one's controlled by Irie up to Penu. No numbers, so he's gonna slow it down. Drives, penetrates, out to Turo. Okay. And Turo smartly puts the ball on the floor and it pays off, gets in the hands of Van Gao. He was halfway up on that shot. There they have Moni inside working against Strandell. And they're gonna say he stepped on the baseline. Jonas going to take a break here. Well-deserved break. Yep. That's good minutes he gave him right there. Brooklyn Bruce in. For the Knights. So under eight to go here. Strandell up high to Simmers. Over to Wilbur. There, good job. Got to recover now, and they're going to get Jackson Miller with the hands on that one. It's all right. Coach Brandt was happy. They had him trapped in that corner, the dangerous corner up there at the half court, but able to get the pass away. Third foul, team foul on the Mustangs. They can be a little aggressive on that. Going to make things happen out of that. Simmers out on the wing, inside to pay against Donovan here. Jeez. Goes just straight up on him, nice. but good deal, Tommy, though. good job going straight up, affecting Pay's shot. He had him underneath the basket. You'll see Tommy get pushed around. <laughs> there. Very often. And there Pay recovers that long wingspan, swatting that one on Angau. Deer back in to replace Miller, so starters back on the floor for Cheyenne. Going to look for the elevator screen here for Angau. Gets the look he wants, and he drains it, makes him pay, and ties it back up. Good call, Coach. Both of you. <laughs> so for the athletes on the floor, it's been a pretty clean game. No one in the bonus quite yet. Simmers. Travel. It's got to be a travel. Yeah. Well, they're going to say it went out on him, and... And Gao tied him up for a second. Looked like he maybe hit the ground before releasing it, but they're going to say it's a turnover. Little pressure here. Cole Wilbur going to make Penu work a little bit to bring it up the floor. High screen by Onneman to free up Barry. Up top to Deer, inside feed. Good finish wow. by Good Tommy play. Onneman. That's a legitimate take against a legitimate defender right Yeah, there. and you know, what What option does Pay have when he gets his shoulder into him like yep. that? Hey, Tommy did a really good job of setting him up. 
Simmers unable to connect from the corner on that three up top. Good pump fake and dish by Deer to off. Noah Olson. Good recovery by Central. They contest that. Onneman, right oh. place, right time, trying to throw it down. He's going to draw the foul on that one. Tommy wanted to say, I can do that too. <laughs> That's exactly right. He could have easily laid that one in and got away, but he was like, no, nah, I think I'm going to try and dunk it, and he which does, I love about him. He does get paid to give up his first foul, so that's now six team fouls on the Knights as Onneman makes the first. So the rest of the game, or the rest of the half, I should say, Cheyenne will be in the bonus. Long off back iron. Pay brings it down. Chan recovers in transition. Strandell here, working against Deer. Good help, yeah, that leaves Pay alone. There's oh, yeah, good yeah. anticipation, good hands by Deer. Yeah, great hands, you just need to get your hands on that ball. Penu up top to Angau, almost loses the handle. Corner three, that's <laughs> no Olsen's spot. That yeah. one rings in and out. Had a few of those. Just he's right around there too. He's gonna they're gonna fall. Good hustle. Good hustle right there. That's just something that you need to ignite him a little bit. You need something to make a play so he gets it gets into the game. Good move by Angao. He caught that in traffic quickly between the legs. Hangs in the air, gets the shot off, doesn't convert, but draws the foul. That's the second foul on Strandell. We'll see now if uh Coach Carlson opts to get him off the floor. He does, doesn't want Strandell picking up that third foul. No. Still a long way to go to the end of this half. It amazes me how, how soft John puts shots up even when he gets hammered and fouled and you know he still puts a lot of touch on the ball. So five point lead for the Mustangs as we're winding down towards five minutes to go here in the first half. Central working it around the perimeter. Being harassed by the Cheyenne defense. Wilbur down in the corner. Opts not to go into pay with a post entry pass. They continue to work it around the outside. Wilbur to Wilbur. Back to Wilbur. This time it's That's Ross pulling, pulling the trigger. It's a great set on defense there. There they find Onneman inside. Tommy working down low. Good help on the weak side. There you go. Pay lost his footing, and it was good recognition by getting the ball back to him. And that's going to be a timeout. Cheyenne Bench is excited right now, and they, they should be. They should be. So timeout called on the floor. Cheyenne leads Grand Fork Central 29-22. We'll be right back. There is no off season for greatness. You do what it takes to stay in the game. And so do we. Our commitment is to keep you moving forward. Essentia Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Like nowhere else. Welcome back to Cheyenne High School. This broadcast is sponsored in part by Touchmark at Harwood Groves, a full service retirement community complete with a health and fitness club, offering fitness classes, personal training and more so you can stay active with your grandkids for years to come. Visit touchmarkfargo.com to learn more. So Coach Carlson may be feeling like things were getting away from him a little bit. Calls the time out there. Coach Brandt telling his defense to work hard, kick out, Unable to convert on that one is Ross Wilbur, and they're going to get a foul. He was but excited after that timeout, and I think that's a good thing, too. You, you, coach calls a timeout to, to stop the bleed and to stop the run. We want to keep the run up, so he's yeah. trying to get that energy going. And got a good stop there. Hopefully we can get a basket here and just keep it rolling. 
Over the top, tough pass, hauled in by Onneman, but taken away. I think that was Wyman that got that one. Yeah, that's right. Pay inside. He's a bully in there. He Goodness is. Gracious. Kind of moves his way through Caleb yeah. Deer, but unable to convert. Cheyenne, no numbers. They find Onneman down inside. Yeah. There's that drop step Beautiful. in that left hand. Right around Pay. I think that one caught Pay by surprise how quickly Onneman used that drop step on him that time. That's what that's what is really Tommy's a big kid, but he's got really good feet for a guy his size, and he's got nice dexterity. He's a good looking athlete. So again, Onneman helps out, leaves pay, but it works out here. And there they're gonna get no Olsen on the hand with that one. That'll be the fourth team foul for the Mustangs. One thing I worry about as the game wears on is we, we have made this uh, nice run and you want to keep the hot players, and that's all your starters. They're playing a lot of minutes yeah. this first half. And playing their third game in a week. You yeah. know, as this is the middle of the schedule. This isn't a, a do-or-die type of game. It is a big game, and at your home gym, you want to come out, especially after a loss on Tuesday. But you're right, Coach. you you know you got to also play the long game with this. And Gal battles pay, and neither one pulls it down, but Onneman corrals it. Up to Penu on the wing. They've done a good job on Barry tonight. Barry's yeah. so good at changing speed mm -hmm. in there, and they've not been able to get, he's not been able to get that good. Beautiful layup. Pass and finish there. That one was Cole Wilbur. Those Wilbur, both those kids are impressive athletes. Yeah. Yeah, it, Barry usually gets to the basket one or two times a half. He has right. to get to this, nope. this half. And that one's going to be tied up. Good defense by the Knights. They're going to retain possession off of that. So whatever Coach Carlson talked about must have been effective in the timeout as Central has looked big. Oh, Here's goodness. Jonas wide open. No, See, and that's, that's falling asleep on defense yep. there. And, and Coach Brandt has the arms up going, what, what's going on with that? And Jonas playing an impressive half for the uh, Knights off the bench, that's for sure. And there comes all three subs for us. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little tired on defense. Good job by Deer converting there. Lead back up to six for Cheyenne. That was a strong move. Deer gives him such a presence. He can do anything. He can be anywhere on the court. He can play any position. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a gift to have. As you don't get that every year. Yeah, you really don't. Good job by Deer corralling that one. Barry's going to push tempo. Out to Angao from his spot. Oh. Anywhere around the top of the yep. key is really where John is so dangerous. He can shoot it from anywhere, but that's his preferred location, and that's a nine-point lead. And so now we know who who missed their assignment the last time yeah. as John Angao is getting out on Jonas this time. That's one where you come back down, you're like, hey, you want to switch this time <laughs> so no one knows I was my guy? <laughs> oh, good job there by Ross Wilbur making... Barry Penn, who worked hard on D, and Barry's going to get called for a reach on that. 15 foul for the Mustangs. That's his second. That Barry might sit him second, down. yeah. So Irie, Moni, and Jackson Miller in. Staying on the floor is Onneman and Deer. Jonas loses the handle. He was looking to get downhill to the basket. Oh, nice step back. Yeah, good step back by Simmers, but unable to find the range. Jackson Miller gonna set things up here. To Deer, the inside pass to Onneman, yeah. And you know, again, that first instinct to want to put the ball on the floor as uh, Cole Wilbur got a hand in there and caused Tommy to take an extra step. So under a minute to go now here in the first half. Mustangs with a nine point lead. Good help by Irie there, preventing Wilbur from getting around the corner. Chonis there we go. loses the handle on that one. Out of bounds. 50 seconds on the button. I'm trying to get a quick shot up here. And get yeah, a two get for a one. two for one maybe for the Mustangs. See if something presents itself. They're gonna go inside to Turomoni. Yeah, and he loses the handle. Doesn't love contact. Sometimes that bothers him a little bit. 
Central down deep to Pay. Those two like contact though. They do. <laughs> wow, Pay rises up so quickly just <laughs> off the back iron. Shot clock is off, so Cheyenne probably gonna hold for one. Unless something really good presents itself. Over to Miller, down to Moni, back up to Miller up top. He's gonna back it up. They're gonna run something special here. Onneman with the high screen. Kick to Irie, he pulls the trigger. Boom. He finds the range. Only, oh, and good D by Turo Moni. Gets a shot off, he gets a hand on it, and gets the steal, unable to convert. But a good flurry and finish for the Mustangs yeah, here to end the half. And they're gonna walk away with a 12 point lead at halftime against the number four ranked team in the state. Coach, what are the things you like from Cheyenne here in the first half? Well, we've been competing, we've been competitive. I, I, I love the, we came, we, came, we had a little run, they called the timeout, good timeout. They cut it within four, and then we were able to still uh, put, our, put our reserves in and expand that lead. Now, I think that was crucial for us going into half. So we're gonna step away here uh, for a few minutes. Join us, we'll uh, preview some upcoming uh, thoughts on the second half and uh, see how this one turns out. At halftime, West Fargo Cheyenne 39, Grand Forks Central 27. We'll be right back. What does it take to make fitness part of your lifestyle? It's intention, it's commitment, it's resilience. It's just who you are. You put in the time and effort to stay active. Our expert orthopedic and sports medicine providers also put in the time and effort to invest in new methods and treatments. Whatever you do to stay active, we are here to keep you moving. It's just who we are. Orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. Touchmark is a place where you can really be yourself. It's a complete family atmosphere from the residents to the team members to the community. There is just such a homey feeling here. The energy and the positivity, I think, is what's really important. You come in, you feel like you're part of a family. You're building a relationship. You're building friendships. We feel very blessed to be here at Touchmark. It's incredibly important to create that family atmosphere, which is what Touchmark really values. In this place, we face obstacles like nowhere else. The clock, the trail, the hill, the challenge that's always waiting. When that challenge comes, we'll meet it together. Because this, it's your chance to show what you're made of. Tenacity, resilience, and the power to prove that the toughest competition comes from within. This is orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. Touchmark at Harwood Groves is located in South Fargo, North Dakota, on a 14-acre garden-like setting. And we have everything from cottages to apartments, a health club, activities. We tend to take groups of residents out downtown, which is just a very vibrant and growing community. The easiest way I can say it is we are going to treat our residents the way that we would treat our best friends. That's what it feels like. And that's what I love about my job. It feels like a family. When your future lies ahead, we help set you on the right course. When your whole world is about to change, we help you prepare for your new life. When staying healthy means staying informed, we help you find answers. This is perseverance, understanding, connection. These are remarkable people doing remarkable things together.
what makes Touchmark special is how you feel when you walk into Touchmark at Harwood Groves. We often hear that it's like a North Dakota hug. I think it's the people that make Touchmark special. One of the things that makes Touchmark is the caliber of the team members here. You could ask them for anything and they'll say, we'll take care of it. Every day that we walk in these doors, we really take time to listen to each other, to listen to our residents, and to be there and to be a friend. Here, when your future lies ahead, we help set you on the right course. When your whole world is about to change, we help you prepare for your new life. When staying healthy means staying informed, we help you find answers. This is perseverance, understanding, connection. These are remarkable people doing remarkable things together. Welcome back to West Fargo Cheyenne where we're at halftime of the matchup between the number four Grand Fork Central Knights and the number five West Fargo Cheyenne Mustangs. Mustangs holding a 12 point lead at halftime here. Uh, one update from the only other game going on right now in the EDC. That's a girls game up at Red River. Uh, Grand Fork's Red River um, hosting the number three ranked West Fargo Horace Hawks and Red River has jumped up to a 36 to 19 point, 36 to 19 lead with just a few minutes left in the first half. We'll try and give you an update on that. Mustang fans, we're lean. Well, one of us up here is. We're efficient and don't complicate things. This keeps us focused on offering clients the best possible solution. Apex Engineering Group, there is no B team. So Coach Newton, we talked about the nice run by Cheyenne, kind of that high energy. They, you know, there's always that chance after a, a timeout. You know, a coach choosing to try and use a timeout to try and stop momentum for the other team, and and Central did one of those timeouts, but Cheyenne overcame that. What Cheyenne need to do to try and maintain this lead, or maybe even pull away, add a little bit to it here in the second half? I would say quality possessions like they've had. They're getting the ball into Tommy. And if they put too many guys into him, he pumps it back out. John's been hot. I bet he's got close to half our points, and, you know, they just got to keep going. I, I think I would like to point out it, it, two well-coached teams. You know, they, Coach uh, uh, Central, Carlson. Coach, yeah, he, he noticed we were out of hand and got that great timeout, cut it within four. I think Brant did a great job of getting his kids ready on a, day, on a day's notice, come off a tough loss, and, and be able to just come out in the first half and play like they did. So hopefully he can keep it up. But... I think both coaches done a great job uh, getting their boys ready to play in this one. So it should be an entertaining second half, that's for sure. Uh, Central, you know, we saw the athleticism of guys like Eric Pay and the quickness of the Wilbers, um, and Chonis really gave some quality minutes and some points off the bench did. for uh, the Knights, that's for sure. And we saw the guys that you kind of would expect to, to show up for Cheyenne, as you mentioned, John Angau, Tommy Oneman. Caleb Deer, maybe not so much on you know in the in the stat book as far as offense and points, but really a, a disruptor on defense mm -hmm. um, and making his presence known, which he always does. Um, and that's a good lesson for young players out there. You don't have to be the guy that scores the most points uh, or shows up in a stat book, and you can still have a tremendous impact on the outcome of a game. And that's something that Caleb Deer does night in and night out. That's exactly right. I mean, he averages 13 points a game, but some games he doesn't have to score. He kind of does what they need. Him yeah. To do. He can do it all. And I, I really like how he plays, especially this year. He's playing really well. And that's important. That, you know, uh, it's not always the most talented team that wins. And, and it's the team that does the small things. It's the team that, uh, you know, is willing to put in that effort and, and uh, play your role, you know. And that's mm -hmm. one thing that has worked really well for Cheyenne this year. 
Uh, is there, you know, it's an eight-man rotation is all. They don't go super deep into the bench, but each guy, I think, has embraced their role, and we've seen different players step up at different times, and that's what equals success uh, when you're looking towards driving towards an appearance at a state tournament and hopefully making a deep run there. No, you're exactly right. I think uh, the same can be said about Central squad. They, they kind of, they gel together. They didn't hit a lot of their shots in the first half, but it seems like they almost always got a really good look it, at the basket. That's, that's a very good point. They, you know, there weren't, uh, unless they were going to the rack, um, but the, they had lots of good open looks. But yeah, you're right. They did not shoot it a uh, great percentage. We don't have the stats up here, but uh, <laughs> Probably the Mustangs coach Brand is happy to see a team that isn't lighting it up from the outside against them for a change because we know Red River shot it really well on Tuesday night up there. So it looks like uh, Central going to start with a little zone action. A little or, zone with Strandell. Yeah, and a little miscommunication there as Deer makes a cut to the wing and Gal returns the pass and no one home and a turnover to start the second half for the Mustangs with a 12-point lead. Starters the same for both teams as we come out for second half play. Inside to Pay, goes up quick and strong against Donovan. And Pay looks like he took one in the face there, I inadvertent. Think right. I think he's okay. Honestly, I think he's a little frustrated, to be honest with you. Well, you know, and, and I thought on that one, there's been some really good takes he's had. But he didn't square up to the basket, and, and, you know, you can't really make that adjustment in the air. If you're going to have good success against a, a good post defender and a big kid like Tommy Onneman, you have to be squared and know what you're doing when you go up. And I don't think that time Pay really had that opportunity. Yeah, that's true. Hide the zone again. That was yep. just one time. There's oh, good, the back beautiful. door. That's old Tommy Kirchhoff. It is. Right there. Call back to Coach K. Maybe he's listening or watching tonight. And isn't it amazing, though, how many times teams have seen that? They still oh, fall into that. It really is. Good step under by Simmers, and he is able to connect. And we It'll, don't even get the ball to the high post very often unless we're running that. Play. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's just it. That should be the alarm bells and the, right. <laughs> the signal that something's up here. Out on the wing to Angao. Takes it to the free throw line. Kicks out to Olsen. Down to Deer. Back oh, up to Angao. And I think they're going to get no Olsen on that one. Yeah, that's his second. He had pay on the arm. Hard to out jump an athlete like that. But Noel was up there, but just had a little bit of the arm. Yeah, he's got quick hands. Tries to get him in. That, that time it got him in trouble, but... So seeing a little more good up and under there by Simmers. Seeing Pay come out from the basket a little bit here, maybe trying to draw on him and away from the paint, making it a little bit easier for their guys to get to the rim. Um, and that one's going to pay off with a foul on Angao, his second. So quick two fouls, not even two minutes into the half. Two fouls on the Mustangs, and Simmers rattles that one home. He hasn't, we haven't heard much out of him tonight. He's, he's one of their top scorers, too. Yeah. He's a good-looking kid, too. He's built well. Well, and that's, you know, when, when you see a team like this that, you know, they're number four in the state for a reason is Tommy's going to throw that one down. No foul called on Pay as he tried to get up there. Uh, you know, but they're number four for a reason. Yeah. And good athletes, good shooters, well-coached, disciplined team. Onneman leaves pay for a second, recovers in time. Simmer's going to attack again. That's three times in a row, yeah. and that's going to be the third foul on there. Angao. And that's probably up, and we're going to see Sully Irie replace him. That's too bad, too. He's playing so well tonight. That's just a He is, and, you know, trying to contest, but trying not to make that foul. A lot of contact. Yeah. Simmer's a beast. He's a strong kid. He he, that was a good take. So John's going to have to sit down for a while. Sully Irie on the floor to replace him. Someone's going to have to hit a shot now. Yep. Certainly John's disappointed with that. But this is where good teams come through. Find a guy to replace that offense. Next guy up mentality. As we're seeing a 
Zone press for the first time, and that was thrown directly to Simmers. First time that we've seen that tonight, and he converts. Tim Brandt holding off on calling a timeout here. And here's, you know, we saw this a little bit with the girls team the other night. You can't pass your way through a, a zone press. You can't dribble your way through. It's It's got to be a mixture, and you've got to kind of feel it, yeah. right? And Cheyenne trying to pass their way through. Didn't work out. There, Strandell picks the pocket, drops it off. Don't nice pass. Like there comes yeah. the timeout. Yes, As Cole Wilbur finishes that one. So that lead now down to six. Coach Brent calling a timeout. We'll do the same. We'll be right back. What does it take to make fitness part of your lifestyle? It's intention. It's commitment. It's resilience. It's just who you are. You put in the time and effort to stay active. Our expert orthopedic and sports medicine providers also put in the time and effort to invest in new methods and treatments. Whatever you do to stay active, we are here to keep you moving. It's just who we are. Orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. I think what makes Touchmark special is how you feel when you walk in to Touchmark at Harwood Groves. We often hear that it's like a North Dakota hug. I think it's the people that make Touchmark special. One of the things that makes Touchmark is the caliber of the team members here. You could ask them for anything and they'll say, we'll take care of it. Every day that we walk in these doors, we really take time to listen to each other, to listen to our residents, and to be there and to be a friend. Welcome back to Cheyenne High School. Coming down on 15 minutes to go here in the second half. There as Barry Penu drains one from the wing. That was big, we needed that. That was, and it was well done. Yep. Central came out of their zone, but good ball movement to a wide open Barry Penu who knocks down the three. Sully had a nice penetration there, got a good kick. Good. Oh, goodness. Good job by Pay. He's frustrated, you can tell though, he was slamming He down. threw that one down hard. Tommy's been, Tommy's been frustrating him tonight. He just goes up differently. It's yeah. just quick and, and explosive. Irie penetrates, dishes it off to Barry, loses, gets it back. Out to Deer, under 10 on the shot clock. Oh, it's a rarity. It is, I think the first time tonight from deep. As time was running down on the shot clock, Deer unable to connect from the wing, and Central with a chance. Here, kick out to Wilbur. He misses. Brought in by Noah Olson, who throws it away to Barry Penu. And we're gonna see Moni and Jackson Miller in for Penu and Noah Olson. I kind of figured that was gonna happen. Both those have been a little sloppy with the ball, and give them a little break, think about it, and we'll get them back in there. Chonis back on the floor for the Knights. Good job defensively there by Sully Irie. And then Pay, I think coming out to set a screen and doesn't see the post pass come by him. So Tommy Hahnemann's gonna get a steal out of that one. It's one of the problems with that motion offense is there's, no, there's nothing set there. They're yeah. just kind of doing what they do. <laughs> they both do the other thing. You gotta have guys on the same page at all times. And yep. sometimes that doesn't happen. Inside to Onneman. He loses the handle. Timoni saves it to Deer. Again, down to a few seconds on the shot clock. Jackson Miller gets up a shot. Unable to connect. They're doing a really good job of pressuring us in yep. the half court right now. We're having trouble getting the ball in the basket. Jonas. Up to Wilbur. Out to Simmers. Simmers Boy. has attacked the rim this half. Simmers is a different player in yeah, this first and half. And he gets there again and cuts the lead to five. Up top to Onneman. Drops it off to Irie on the wing. He pulls the trigger. Dang. And he makes one. So each team throwing some haymakers here, trying to see if they can build some momentum and for Central, climb back into this, or for Cheyenne to extend the lead. Pay? So he doesn't shoot it a ton, but he's 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 got a really good stroke. He doesn't do it a bunch. Oh, Deer wanted that one. His eyes lit up. Simmers again, contested by Onneman that time. It's such a difference maker having that presence in there. You can totally get beat to the basket and not even give up a decent shot. 
Turo Money going to light this one up. And Tommy hey. with the tip. Rises up that 6-9 frame. Big play. I think he pays a little tired right now. Double digits again for the lead for Cheyenne. Cole Wilbur up top. Out to Chonis on the wing. Up high to Strandell. Back down into Pay. He kicks it out. Chonis thought about it. Doesn't pull the trigger. Strandell going to try and get past oh. Moni. He does. That's a good take. Turo follows him on the reverse layup opportunity. Turo just got beat just a little bit on the first step and couldn't recover. Mustang fans, you don't hire engineers that are good enough. You hire the very best. Incidentally, so do we. Apex Engineering Group, there is no B team. Well, Strandell makes the first of two. And we got someone waiting for Strandell. I think that's Wyman waiting to come in. Strandell makes both. He's replaced by Trey Wyman. And Central going to show that press look once again. And Gao came back And in. John Angau, I'm sure with a, uh, a warning and yeah. a, uh, explicit instructions on what they expect of him. We're going to get someone in the middle. Yeah, there he goes. There it is. There Attack. you go. And now Tango, one of his spots, mm. unable to finish, There's but Deer. great follow by Deer. Does it all. Slashes to the basket, in the air, put back, keeps the lead at 10. Not to mention he was smart enough to get to the basket and try and get a rebound. He was athletic enough to be able to tip in a basket like that. That was an exceptional play. Boy, the Simmers, Simmers attacking Angau. John smartly lets that shot go by, and it was a little wild. Jackson Miller from three, okay. and he drains it. There you go. A rare three by Jackson Miller. We'll Everybody getting involved here is Cheyenne. He's a fan favorite. Extends the lead to 13. Simmers up top to Wyman, to Chonis. They're going to look inside to Pay. This time working against Turo Money. And Eric Pay goes up. God, I almost, I think, was expecting to wear some contact and none came. Nope. Ball squirted out of his hands and he's unable to convert from point blank range. And Gao up top to Moni. Over to Sully. Inside to Deer and that one's tipped away. But John Angao on the spot and he converts. <laughs> Coach Brandt excited about the defense. And Gao with an and one opportunity. Lead up to 15, and here comes Strandell again, kinda, and Bruce. Kind of got himself caught in the air and didn't have anywhere to go with yeah. the ball, and, and Angau was in the right place at the right time, which he usually is. So John, with the three fouls, makes three the old-fashioned way. That's a good call, putting him back in the game when they did. It worked out for him. We really expanded the lead, and he wasn't you know, didn't pick up a cheap one. Cole Wilbur going to be fouled there by Zoe Irie. Zoe, Zoe caught a little flat-footed, yep. anticipating he was going to use that ball screen on the to Zoe's right, and he went to the left and kind of caught him flat-footed. So that's the fourth team foul now on Cheyenne. Knights with only one team foul this half. Turo jumps that screen, recovers in time to get back to pay. Outside to Strandell. Here comes the screen. Good, good, another good job by Moni jumping that. Strandell rises up. Good in look. and out. That was a good look. It was. I mean, from eight feet, you can't ask for much more than that. No, he's long. That Strandell is. Sully Irie. It's a good take. Yeah. Unable to convert. Out to Wyman. He goes hard to the rim. <laughs> and Gao contests. Wyman gets it back. Pay going to drive in. That time he converts. So a little sloppy here for the last couple minutes. But Cheyenne maintains a 14-point lead as we're winding down towards nine minutes to go here in the half. Turo, a little jab step over to John Angau. He's out to Jackson Miller, who's going to get it yeah. inside. And there's a step, yeah. Kind of got caught on the spin, and the ball didn't get to the ground Yeah, it kind of hung on his yeah. hip, and he couldn't get it onto the floor fast enough. So Deer and Moni are going to take a seat. There's going to be a timeout by 
Grand Forks Central. So we're going to do the same. 9.06 to go. Mustangs lead the Knights 59-45. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We come out of timeout, playing a little selection from Coach Newton's Spotify playlist there, a little uh, House Heck of Pain yeah. jump around. I almost did myself. Give uh, a shout out to the dance or the uh, cheer team. They got state competition coming up February 10th. They are out in a uh, timeout doing one of their patented cheers. So we return to action here, under nine to go. Ross Wilbur outside, up to Strandell at the top of the key. Over to pay okay. a, 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 a rare three attempt. And you can see why. <laughs> so Irie going to try and set up some offense here. And go hounded by Wyman up top. John, oh, oh you got to be careful. He's yeah, he dropped that elbow, but he follows his shot. And they're going to get another and one opportunity on that. No, that could have went either way there. That, yeah, you know. That is one thing John does a lot when he's maneuvering for position. He drops that weed shoulder and, does. you know, sometimes refs let him get away with it and others have called him for chargings on, or for a charge on that. But he makes the three and now the weed is up to 17 as Bruce is going to bring the ball up. He uses the high screen from Pay to Wyman to Strandell in the corner, down inside to Pay. He's sloppy. Sloppy, lazy pass by Pay thinking he was going to catch someone off guard. Oh, that's how is he not foul? Yeah, that's nine guy going over the back there. Oh, and Ross Wilbur loses the handle, but they're to say it's off Cheyenne. You know, and that is one thing, Coach, kind of a lost art with the, the you know, the surge in three-point shooting and what analytics say. You know, that, that basic post-entry pass, uh, kind of a lost art. Just, you know, big men don't play as large a part as they once did in games. And, you know, and that, and there was certainly contact that time as Bruce pulls up and Onneman brings it down on the defensive glass. But you just, I don't think kids practice those entry passes anymore the way they did. Oh, oh my goodness. Tommy Onneman. Thunderous dunk. And pay is off the floor for the first time tonight. Yeah, and Tommy be. takes advantage there. Wyman gets to the rim and converts. Yeah, you could tell he was getting tired. Just that's what happened. You get tired, you get yeah. a little lethargic out there, and that's just that's just a natural thing. So they're gonna see if they can uh, work. Yeah, they go right to work. Two in a row to Onneman. Strandell's doing what he can, but uh, he's given up a lot of yep. size to Tommy Onneman. Just a difference maker. And I wonder how long they'll go with pay on the bench. Well, they almost got to think about, you know, either you're going to put your reserves in or you're going to have to make a charge. Here. Yeah. There's not a lot of room for error right now. No, at seven minutes, you're going to have to get it into single digits within by about four minutes to go or so, three and a half, if you're going to have a legitimate chance to try and bring this one back. Jonas back in for the Knights. And Simmers is going to inbound up top to Strandell. Uses the screen from Jonas, rises up, right. drains the elbow jumper. Good form. Yeah, his his uh, his his aiming his high point when he reaches is, is really high. Yeah. yeah. I'm impressed with him. Oof, there you go. Jackson Miller, the floating oh, the running floater. Beautiful. He's an old school player right there. That is yeah. that was what looked like John Havlicek in there. Cross court to Chonis. He spots up for the corner three, unable to bring it in. Onneman controls the board, and he's going to get fouled. That's going to be the third team foul on Central this half. 
Boy, they really clean up the fouls. That's about what they have. They had six fouls with uh, 12 minutes to yeah. go in the first half, and they really haven't done much since. Central again, little man press here, or at least the look of it to start. Inbounded to Soliari. Yeah, they're gonna, just going to go man. Good use of that high screen by Onneman. Oh, they had him for a second underneath. They go inside now. Tommy drives in, picked his pocket, did Simmers, and he comes out of there. John, John Hangau still reaching. Still reaching. He's, he's getting away with it. <laughs> There's a shot by Cole Wilbur. That's short iron. He just got too much hand in his face. Yeah, and that one's poked away by Simmers again. He pulls the trigger. He can't connect. And Angau's going to slow it down here. Missed Onneman. Tommy's running for that <laughs> rim. He wants to make a statement. There's the alley-oop. Oh, and dropped in by Tommy Onneman. John was a great pass. Great awareness yep. off that screen. He saw he knew he was going to be there. Good attack by Simmers. But I think Central's running out of gas yep. here. And down 21. Pay's going to come in. But if you've got to have something happen in the next minute or two. Uh, otherwise, this one's just kind of getting away from you. So we're going to see Penu, Deer, Moni return for the Mustangs. They're going to replace Angau, Miller, and Irie. This will be uh, Central's last ditch effort here. They yeah. Got, got their dogs back in one more time. They're going to try and make a little run here. I'm not even going to say anything because it's way too early, but 49 points at this point in time for the Mustangs is a massive win because they score a lot Absolutely. of Absolutely, and, and you know, if, you, if you're playing defense the way that you'd like, you know, we kind of say first team to 65 probably is going to be that team that pulls that out, and, and Cheyenne, you know, you're right. It's early. Things could certainly change, but uh, Coach Brandt has to be pleased with the defensive effort by his team tonight. Yeah, he does. Almost thrown away by Onneman. Cole Wilbur can't bring it down. Penu out to Deer, cross court to Turomoni in the corner. He pulls up. And Onneman can't tip still it in. Oh, goodness. Here we go. Pays wants to get to the rim, and he wow. does. Coast to coast, and no one wanted anything to do no. with him. <laughs> they don't even have wife and kids to think about, but they're still <laughs> smart enough to stay out of his way. That's exactly right. The drive by Deer making Wyman. Yeah. He's still grinding him with arm. You're not supposed to be able to do that. And they find Onneman. He tries to throw oh. that one down. Strandell, they're going to get on the foul. Strandell is the leading blocker on this team, surprisingly. I think it would be Pay, but Strandell actually is third in the EDC in blocks. He got up with him there. Third foul, and he's talking to the ref. <laughs> Telling him that I think you missed that he one. Said, he said, Mr. Referee, I respect you a lot, but I had a lot of ball there. <laughs> plus, I've given up five inches. Yeah. It's cut me some slack. So on him into the line for two. In and out on the first. John Angau back in, replacing Noah Olson. 4.38 to go in a 19-point lead for the Mustangs. Tommy Long on the second. So 0 for 2 on that trip for Ottoman. They're going to have to get some threes up quickly. There's one from Strandell, unable to convert. Ottoman pulls that down. Boy, a lot of arms in there, a yep. lot of reaching. Yeah, they're kind of letting Re the play Yeah, right they now. are. It's not chippy, but just, nope, right. you know, it, oh, John loses his footing. Wyman over to Travel. Cole Wilbur and followed up by Pay. He got an extra step in there. They let him away with it. And Central going to continue to put some pressure on here. Turomoni going to bring up the sideline. Keeps Strandell on his hip. And Strandell has to let him go. And we got to work the clock a little bit as we work it around. We don't need a quick shot. Beautiful. Tommy wanted that yeah. one. Into the middle of the lane, that jump hook with the left hand. He just said, you know what, guys? I'm just going to take this one. I got it. 19-point lead again for the Mustangs. Chonis on the wing. Oh, Ed. Cole Wilbur for a second. Opted not. They're down inside to pay. Good. Yeah. Oh. I didn't disagree with that. Again, the timing of the well, call. Well, that, that's just good, it. No. It's coming a second or two after the play has happened. It's almost like the guy's got a little replay switch in his hand. He's looking at yeah. it. Yeah. 
And that, you know, surprisingly, that's only Tommy's first foul. Yeah. And, and Pay has made him work hard at the rim tonight. He really has. He's got a great job of staying up. Staying uh, on his feet and then the way he jumps when he's straight up yep, and down. Vertical and, and not letting that happen. And Pay, you can see the frustration for Pay tonight. Yep. Probably not many nights that, nope. that he gets challenged like this by a big man. He's yeah, yeah. usually the guy in control, and that's two air balls for Eric Pay. And that, that would be uncharacteristic. And, yeah. and that's, again, that's frustration. You could yep. tell early in the second half, he had a couple of plays where he thought he was fouled. They didn't call it. He just, he just kind of let it affect him. Yeah. So up high to Moni, out to Deer on the wing. Uh, Onneman loses oh, the handle. Now yeah. he's inside to John Angau. He's going to get fouled. John continuing to work hard inside. That's going to be the fourth foul on Trey Wyman. Send Angau to the line for two. And at 313, 19, possibly 20 to 21 point lead as Angau makes it. Oh, 19 still. Uh, I wonder if you're not going to see the benches start yeah. to clear here pretty quickly. Pretty quick. I tell you what, with John, is how many times that tonight where that's not in the offense, that's not part right. of the play. He just did it. He just made this cut. He got down to the post. He's not a post, and all of a sudden he just sees it. He goes there, and he makes things happen. It vacates that open or finds that open area just and fills back. it. Kicks oh. out to Deer. He can't convert, and there's the fourth on Angau. He lived dangerously <laughs> for a lot of minutes, yeah. and he finally picks up the fourth. He was a cat. He'd be in trouble right now. <laughs> and that is the seventh team foul, so that will put Central at the line for the bonus the rest of the way. John picks up his fourth, and it's going to be, uh, I think that's Bruce going to the line. And you got 19-point here lead. You got seven possessions. If we if we can hold them here, we got to take a little more time in the offensive sets. Really, look how quickly Pay got up right over the top of Onneman there on that tip-in opportunity. He didn't convert, but again, the athleticism is impressive. Yeah, Help got to come to him. Yeah, you got you can't stand and and wait for the ball. Turo's going to pull the trigger from the corner. Deer again, offense. Deer oh, again. Back. Yeah. <laughs> Pay. Up the floor, kind of a hook pass to Strandell, to Cole Wilbur, and that one is good. And there's a pass to Turo. Good pump fake. Good. Out good to, to John. Come on, John. And Gowan able to convert. So you know what? They hit a three right here. We're going to be calling a timeout, I guarantee you. There it is. Three-pointer. Oh, maybe not. That one by Bruce. 14 now. Coach Brandt continuing to let Cheyenne figure their way out of this. There's a foul. Nope. Yeah. Cheyenne takes the timeout. Coach Brandt gets a quick timeout, seeing Penu in trouble. Well, Cheyenne maintains a 14-point lead, but there's only 2.12 to go. We'll stay here for this one. Uh... This broadcast is sponsored in part by Touchmark at Harwood Groves, a full-service retirement community complete with a health and fitness club, offering fitness classes, personal training, and more so you can stay active with your grandkids for years to come. Visit touchmarkfargo.com to learn more. Coach, what, what do you suppose Coach, uh, Coach Brandt's talking about in the huddle here? They got, they got to settle down. They got to get the ball across half court. Still look to score, but work the shot clock a little bit. It's almost like they're panicked. They get the ball across, yep. and then they just they want to hold it. They know they're not supposed to shoot, so they're just they're trying too hard to, to hold the ball. I think they just got to relax and go play. Well, and that's the purpose of you know that zone to speed you up to into quick decisions, bad decisions. You know, probably had the the team look at the scoreboard and said, "Look at that, we're up by 14 points with two minutes." There's no need for us to rush this or to push things. There's good ball movement, and they finally wow. get it in the wow. hands of the guy that they would want to. Good rebound and smart play by taking it back out. Those kill you this late in the game. Yep. You're, you're, you're just right at the end of it, and you can't You, you, you work can't so no hard for that mm -hmm. entire sequence, and then they come away with an offensive rebound. So again, winding down towards 10 on the shot clock, but Cheyenne smartly using the, the shot clock here. Now under 10, yeah. and Gao gets to the rim and finishes, and that's through Dager, I think. Yeah. You know, that, that was such a good sequence by Cheyenne. They keep the, off, they keep the uh, possession, get an extra possession on the offensive glass. Oh. Deer almost gets a steal there. He pokes it out of bounds. 
and then they milk the shot clock for another 30 seconds, and Angau scores. On a layup. Too. Yeah, on a layup. Just, it was beautifully uh, executed offense right there. So, some guys coming off the bench here for Central. Coach Brandt going to stay with his guys the rest of the way. There's a shot by Bruce, unable to connect. That's a sophomore. That was a <laughs> gutsy shot for a sophomore. And again, Cheyenne just going to try and work the clock here. Unless something very amazing opens up the opportunity, you just keep moving that ball. Make, make Central clock. work a little bit on defense. There's a good cut by Deer. Cheyenne unable to get that one. Simmers going to attack one more time to the rim. Little Ooh. slasher. Yep. Four on one there, and you get the old solo take. Oh, Strandell's wondering, with two Cheyenne guys closest to the ball, how did I knock it out? But that's what the ref calls. I think so they, they should, I'm sorry. I should, go uh, ahead. No, you. I think they should put Cooper Bryan in, give him some time. <laughs> so 40 seconds to go here. Cheyenne does have to get a shot off or take the violation, but they're just going to eat up this clock, and Central just kind of playing some yep. token D. Everyone knows this one is over. They know it's not their last time they're going to see each other and get this one, pack the bus, and get back home. Oh, Bruce steps in the way of that one. He thought about pulling up for that three again, <laughs> and he does. Yeah. From NBA land, too. That's why you airball. You got to get yourself up to the line. Barry pulls that one down. He gets pushed. That's going to send him to the line because that will be the seventh team foul, I believe, on Grand Fork Central, and that one is on uh, number two. Tyler Wallen. I tell you, it's tough for those sophomores, too. You can tell they just physically, you know. Yeah. Uh, you don't see a lot of them that can make a big splash in the EDC. It's such a physical conference. And, you know, there's and a lot of is. men in this conference. And, and every level seems the speed ratchets mm -hmm. up, you know. Freshman to sophomore, it moves a step faster. Sophomore to JV, JV to varsity. And, you know, the things that work for you as a freshman, right. you're out here as a sophomore, don't necessarily work anymore against the varsity players. Yeah, that's exactly right. Barry makes both. Makes it 76-58. Under 10 to go. This is going to do it on this one. What a great dub for the Mustangs. A big win. And they don't need to take the ball out. And that one's going to end it. So, big win tonight for the Mustangs. Playing the number four ranked team in the state. Both teams coming off losses. Now two in a row for Central in the loss column. Cheyenne gets back in the win column with a 76 to 60 win. Really impressive. Uh, I thought, Coach, you know, from start to finish, um, consistent throughout the game, um, sloppy at times. That's going to happen, you know, but once they got their foot on the gas, they didn't let up. They didn't let that team have a chance. Central made a good run early in the second half, but really that was about the, the end of it. Yep. That's exactly right. They came back twice. We, we got the 12-point lead, and they came back two times. We shut the door on them both times. That was a great job by the kid. And, you know, Tommy Oneman played a big role tonight. How about John Angau? Gave about seven minutes there with three fouls. Yeah. Uh, was aggressive, to say the least. Yeah. Scored, defended, and, you know, gave, and, and gave quality minutes to this team when they needed him. Yeah, I really like how they're coming together as a team. You know, they know they, they all know they want to get the ball to Tommy and work it through there. They got John on the cuts, and then Caleb just does whatever else they do. Yep. And that's just a really big uh, trio of guys that are just starting it to is. gel and get together right now. And and tonight, you know, we've seen nights where Noah Olson gets hot from the corner yep. with those threes. We talked about Barry really, you know, he made a three, but he gets to the rim a lot mm -hmm. in games, a couple times a half with that hesitation, that change of speed. You know, and neither of the go those two really factored into the offensive column tonight. And that's, again, the sign of a good team. When you can win with different guys stepping forward, that you don't have to rely on the same players night after night after night. That's true. And you're going to need them. You know, you're going to need all of them. And you gotta, you got to have that. you got an eight-man rotation. You're going to need that depth going into the playoffs and postseason. You get those back-to-back -back games. And, you know, it's crucial. So I think uh, I, I really like where they're at right now. I think if they're just a little more consistent, night in and night out. Yeah. They're going to be very tough out this year. So that's going to wrap it up for us tonight. Um, I think the next game for Cheyenne, big matchup next Tuesday, I think, at Fargo North and going to be taking on Fargo North. And, of course, they're the reigning state yep. champions. Um, 
And so that's going to be an important tilt. And, and as you mentioned at the outset, you know, there's no night at nights off anymore. No. You know, there were some teams that maybe traditionally were weaker in the conference, and you thought, well, you know, if we go and just do what we have to, we're going to walk away with the W. And especially when those became two-point games, that that was super important. But uh, everyone plays each other twice. You get a home and home, um, and there's really no nights off. And no. so that's going to be important to stack as many wins as you can. Yeah. Um, Coach, this is not my forte. I know this is the point in the broadcast where Grant usually says to like and subscribe to things. Um, I'm not as as up on the uh, on the social media as yeah. the kids are, but there you see on Facebook at Mustang Post, Mustang Graham or Instagram Mustang at Mustang Graham, dot Post, and then on Twitter <laughs> at Mustang Post. Uh, click like and subscribe. Subscribe. Uh, click the bell. That'll notify you every time we go live, and we plan to bring you every home game that both the girls and the boys play this year so uh that's going to do it for us tonight thank you coach newton for coming up and stepping in as we were without grant i'm sure we'll have you up here again um but for tonight west fargo cheyenne impressive victory over the grand fork central knights 76 to 60 thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time was once said, good is the enemy of great. If all that you strive for is good enough, how will you ever achieve greatness? Efforts led to this. Every rep, every drill, all the work unseen will be worth it. Because right now, the eyes are on us. Blow the check up, dip your nation, kill them one by one, final destination, top my destination, I got guardian angels all around it, that's deflected, say, I'm a mother champion, this right here, the f anthem, I can't dab you without hand saying, I don't know your dirty air pants, man, I wake up to like a hundred texts, championship team, but we can't cut the net, she all off in my jersey, looking underdressed, I'm finna buy this bitch to Honda, CRX,